Hey everybody, welcome to my channel, Astro Everett. This is Everett, and um, today I'm going to be talking about my equipment, finally. Um, I've been wanting to do this video for a while, so uh, so I hope you stick around to the end. Uh, I'm going to be showing you the equipment that I use, um, a fair few of the accessories that I, that I need for my astrophotography, um, my mount, uh, obviously my, my telescope and, um, you know, I'm just going to go through what I've learned by using the certain scope that I have, um, versus what I would like. Um, so, you know, uh, like I said, hopefully you, uh, stick around to the end and, uh, I hope you enjoy the video. So, uh, my equipment's coming up. Hey everybody. Welcome to my channel. So as I said before, this is going to be a video on the equipment that I use for my uh, astrophotography. Um, I haven't done visual astronomy in a while, ever since I got hooked on uh, astrophotography, but um, uh, I'm not sure how long this uh, video is going to be. I'm going to kind of fly by the seat of my pants, as I always do in my videos. Um, I don't go by a script. Um, I'm sure if I did do a script, my videos would probably be a lot better, but I want to show you just the, the real side of it. You know, uh, I don't try to edit my videos as much as a lot of people do. Um, I just like to keep them real. Um, but as my, as my video making skills become better, um, I should be bringing you, uh, better videos. But anyway, um, so first off, what I'd like to talk about is um, why I picked the certain um, telescope that I did. Um, I've been in astronomy since I've been into astronomy since the uh, since the '90s, but um, I didn't really consider focal length. Um, I guess you could say that I didn't do enough research. So for any beginners watching this, um, do your homework, um, and also you want to um, you want to consider focal length. Uh, I really didn't have anybody to tell me what focal length was and all that kind of stuff. I started learning that stuff after, but um, yeah, focal length is a it should be it should be your number one concern in my opinion anyway. Uh, when picking a telescope. Um, so the smaller the focal length, so like say 300 millimeters, like in a uh, in a kit lens or uh, um, a camera lens, um, that's going to give you a wider field of view than what a, uh, a 2800 or a 2000 millimeter focal length would. 2000 uh, millimeter focal length will give you a really, really tight, zoomed in shot um, a lot of people talk about magnification I really don't because I deal with astrophotography but um, when you talk about magnification um, you talk about uh, these things right here uh, let's see if I can get this out properly screw it so this is a uh, a 32 mil eyepiece uh, this is what came with the scope um, let's pull this cover off so you can see. Now, as you can see, that's got a fairly big opening. Um, so there's a lot of good eye relief. Um, now there's ones that I don't have out right now, but there are ones that are like, you know, maybe three times the size of a head of a pin. That's when you're getting down into like, the nine mil, the seven mil um, eyepieces. So uh, that's where you want to talk about magnification is when it comes to your eyepieces. So like um, this is a 32 and a nine mil eyepiece will give you more magnification uh, for visual astronomy. Um, for, uh, for astrophotography, I take this out of my image train altogether. Um, this is a one and a one and a quarter inch diagonal. So what it does, let's see if I can uh, 
if I can show you here. Um, so this actually, this just goes into the back of the telescope. So instead of this eyepiece, so say this is the back of the telescope, instead of the eyepiece doing this, and that means if it's pointing straight up, if the scope is pointing straight up or even at a, a, a severe angle, you got to crouch down right behind the telescope in order to look through the eyepiece and it's not that comfortable. So what this does is this, this screws into the back, but it comes off of this, which is the uh, a one and a quarter inch uh, visual back. So it just, it just screws in like that. Um, but like I said, I'm not doing uh, visual astronomy all that much lately um, because I've been just so taken by, um, by uh, astrophotography. But anyway, um, I'll, show you my, uh, I'll show you my scope now. So here we go. So <laughs> here's my scope. Um, this is a Celestron 8SE. Uh, it's called the Next Star line. Um, as you can see, there's the. It's uh, well, you can't see it because there's no measurement on it, but it's eight inches round. Um, it's basically a light bucket. But I will take off this cover here, and this way you should be able to see. Okay, so that's what the inside of the scope looks like. Now, as you can see, um, it's an F10, which is uh, your f-stop, which is it's kind it's kind of slow. It's it, it, that means your telescope's ability to how fast it can collect light, and then uh, if you can see, um, it's a uh, it's two thousand millimeters. So that's the focal length. So the focal length is. The distance the light has to pass through in the tube to get to the back of the telescope or wherever your eyepiece is so with this scope okay light comes in there bounces off the mirror at the back you can probably see it and then what happens is there's another mirror here that the light bounces off of and brings it to the back of the scope now i don't have my um I don't have my visual back on there or my uh, uh, focal reducer, but it's just open to the back. I just wanted to show you that. Uh, and this here, this is my star finder. I uh, only use it a couple of times at night when I'm first doing my alignment, my star alignment, because it doesn't point directly to the star, sometimes, depending on how well my polar alignment is. So all this is really, this is the original one that came with it. It's, it's kind of cheap. It served its purpose, but I wanted to upgrade it. Uh, I bought this used, by the way, everything here, and this part here was broken. So as you can see, I kind of, I tried to kind of glue it um, just to try and, you know, be able to use it. But anyway, I bought this one. Um, this All this is is a red dot sight off of a, a, off a handgun, really, um, or a rifle or whatever. But um, it comes with this adapter here that uh, that slides on to here, so it 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 worked perfectly. So that's my scope, and what I'm gonna do is I'll put the cover back on so I don't get any fingerprints on the corrector plate. Uh, the corrector plate is that piece of glass right in the front. Okay, there we go. I'll get this out of the way. All right, so now what I usually do when I'm doing deep sky, if I want a wider field of view, I'll put this on. This is my 0 0.63 focal reducer, and all this does is it gets put onto the back of the scope. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but there is a piece of glass in there, and what that does is it turns this 2,000 millimeters down to about 1,200 millimeters, 1,280 millimeters, give or take. And all this does is it goes into the back of the telescope. It just threads onto the back of the telescope. 
Actually, here, you know what? I'll thread it on here right now. Okay. And see, just goes on just like that. Okay. So now, uh, that is for when I'm doing um, deep sky. If I want a wider field of view, which I which I do, I like I like the wider field shots, and in hindsight. I probably would have went with a refractor, um, like a, a a smaller form factor refractor, uh, that like the William Optics or the Sharp Star, or even um, uh, the Red Cats. The Red Cats are really nice. Uh, they they they're at two hundred and fifty millimeters focal length, I believe. But um, that's going to give you a really wide field of view. And I'm really digging the wide field stuff that I see online. Uh, not that I don't like this telescope. I think this telescope is great, um, but um, I would uh, I would like a option to do wide field stuff. Now uh, I can use my camera uh, on a tripod, but I don't have a star tracker. So what I'll have to do later on is I'll have to get a bracket for my uh, for my mount and. Uh, be able to fit my camera onto that bracket after I star align it with my scope. It, it'll be a bit of a pain in the butt, but I think it'll be worth it in the end. Um, and then put my camera on that bracket and then slide the bracket into the mount. Uh, that, that way I'll be able to do a little bit more wider field stuff. Just with a regular kit lens or even a um, like a 300 millimeter uh, zoom lens. That would be uh, that would be good, but um, the best the best option I think would be to get a uh, wide field refractor. Uh, maybe down the road, if I uh, if I have a little bit extra money, then that that might be a possibility. But we'll we'll see from there. Um, so anyway, uh, okay. So now, how I attach my camera, um, my Canon EOS Rebel uh, XI or SX, sorry. Uh, it's an older camera. It's about 10, 12 years old. Um, so now this is, if you notice, I, uh, when I showed you the visual back before, okay, so this is a one and a quarter inch visual back. This is a two inch visual back right here. This is the actual uh, uh, visual back, but it's on a T adapter, uh, the Celestron T adapter. So what this does is it just mounts to the back of that focal reducer. So I'll do that now. Come on, there we go, come on. All right, I'm having a little trouble here. I think what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll stop the video and then I'll put it on and then I'll resume the video. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Uh, yeah, that, uh, it was hard to do uh, just sitting off to the side. I actually had to get behind the, the scope. So there it is there. And then you see that end. I don't know if you can see it, but there should be a white and a red dot. So what that does is it lines up with the white and the red dot on there and then it just snaps into place on the back of the telescope. So let me see if I can do that. That should be good enough. Okay, so line up the red and And it just sits on there just like that so that that is my average usual image train for uh, this telescope which is I believe from the back of the back of here or the front of here really or the back of the telescope to my image sensor in there which is I believe 105 millimeters um, if I'm wrong, I'd be great if someone could uh, correct that for me in the comments. Um, but uh, yeah, that's my that's my telescope 
and uh, my my image train that uh, that I take deep sky astrophotography with. Um, next, I'll uh, I'll show you my equatorial mount. See you soon. Okay. So this is my mount. This is what's called a German equatorial mount. Um, it has uh, what it does is it tracks the night sky. Um, so because of the Earth's rotation, this mount compensates for that. Um, so what this does is it tracks the night sky in right ascension. So as, as, the, as the night sky moves, it rotates. So it does both. It does your declination and right ascension. The right ascension is the one that compensates for the uh, for the Earth's rotation, but uh, the declination also moves as well. But um, what this enables me to do is to take longer exposures um, at higher focal lengths, which my telescope does. My telescope has a pretty high focal length, which with my focal reducer has about 1,280 millimeters. Um, so what this does is it enables me to take longer exposures. So before with my alt azimuth mount, um, it uh, I could only do maybe about 18 seconds at the most um, because with an alt azimuth mount, it, it, it only goes like this and like this, side to side and up and down. It doesn't, it doesn't take into account the curve of the night sky. So what this does is it enables me to get um, I'm using it. Un, I'm using my stuff unguided right now. Um, I would like to get into guided astronomy, uh, but that'll be down the road when I can afford to get a guide scope and a guide camera. But anyway, um, so what this does is it rotates in right ascension to follow the curve of uh, the curve of the night sky, or as it as it turns, um, and I can get longer exposures. So at the most right now. The most I've gotten is about uh, two minute exposures, um, and it's it's actually it's pretty cool uh, to watch this thing move and to uh, to actually once I get it star aligned and all that to get it all set up in the night sky and and then I slew to a target and boom it goes right there it's it's actually pretty cool you've probably seen it on some of my other videos, um, but. Uh, yeah, so what it comes with is this is the mount, this is the mount part, and then the tripod is lower. It's down here. It's out of camera. Um, it's uh, it's a fairly beefy uh, tripod. The tripod itself weighs about anywhere from 15 to 17 pounds. Um, but this is where this is this is the beef of the operation. This is what uh, this is what weighs the most. This mount head. This is, well, this is the mount head. This is the saddle, so this is called the saddle, where the declination um, axis is. This is called the saddle. This is what where the telescope actually slips onto. But um, yeah, this mount this mount weighs forty pounds, and that's without the counterweight. The counterweight is seventeen pounds as well. Um, the tripod I think weighs about ten pounds, roughly, in, in, in between ten and fifteen pounds. But this is uh, this counterweight here. This thing weighs about uh, about 17 pounds. But um, okay, I gotta lock that clutch back in because I'll show you what it looks like to put the telescope on. Okay, all right. So yeah, this is uh, so this mount here is a Celestron. It's a uh, a CGEM one mount or a C gem um, not exact uh, gem means German equatorial mount uh, C I guess just stands for Celestron again if uh, someone knows any better more than me uh, like I said uh, this is my this is just a, it's a journey for me so I'm learning as I go but um, to adjust this there's a knob right here to do the elevation, so um, I'm at 44 degrees latitude, I believe it is. Um, so I turn this knob, and then this knob here. I don't know if you can see it. Um, I'm recording everything on my cell phone, by the way, so I don't have access to uh, a zoom feature right now. But anyway, um, 
So to polar align this, you would use this knob, this back knob here, and this knob here to do the elevation. And then there's other knobs down below on either side that turn it this way on this axis. So it's this, this is basically an alt azimuth mount on top of an alt azimuth mount. Uh, that's another way that I've heard it, uh, heard it said. But anyway, um, there's a polar scope right here. And what this polar scope does is it goes right through the center of the mount, the center axis of the mount to line up with Polaris. Polaris is the pole star. Uh, it's about two degrees, two and some odd degrees off of true north. So what you do is you set up this mount. Uh, first you set up the tripod. There's a little, there's a little peg um, that should point north. So what you do is you, you take the mount head off and then, or you take, yeah, you take the mount head off, you put up your tripod and then you point it as close to north as possible. Uh, it doesn't have to be bang on. You're going to do that later when you do your, your polar alignment. But anyway, what that does is the better your polar alignment, the better the tracking will be. So if you're, if you're, if you're polar, if your polar alignment is like bang on, you're, you're good to go. You're good to go with, uh, with uh, guided and unguided um, exposures with your with your uh, telescope. But anyway, um, so what I'll do is I'm going to go grab my telescope and then I'm just going to slide it on and I'll show you what it looks like when everything's all well assembled. Okay, hopefully I don't drop it on camera. That would suck. good so it doesn't fall out um, another thing though too at the bottom of this this extension bar there's a little nut that just screws into the bottom of this extension bar so there's the nut there okay and what that does is it prevents the counterweight from falling off so if throughout the night Due to you know heating and cooling and all that, this this adjustment knob becomes loose and the counterweight falls forward. What that nut does is it prevents this weight from falling off. So say if you're walking by the scope and the, the, the weight falls off and you don't have that nut on to hit your foot, it can do some pretty good damage. It could probably break your foot or toe or something like that. So you definitely don't want that. But uh, yeah, that's what that nut does. So that's a pretty good safety feature. So like I was saying, um, so say for instance, I'm tracking an object that's over there. This is just, this is just a crude kind of representation of what, what it does. Um, the only way to do it is, uh, you know, if I plugged it in and all that and, uh, and kind of move the telescope around a little bit so you can see what, uh, what that would be like. Um, actually, you know what? I just might do that. But first, I'll uh, I'll uh, I'll show you just what how it moves. So say I'm say I'm imaging something over there. Okay, I'm just going to loosen the clutch. So what happens is is in conjunction with your declination moving because it's got to keep it centered in your field of view. So it's going to move the declination and the right ascension ever so slightly so it tracks it so that that is called called sidereal tracking or side rail tracking i've heard it pronounced both ways um i think i think it's pronounced sidereal that that kind of sounds a little cooler <laughs> so uh but anyway so it moves so the curve of the earth moves like this and like that so it just moves back and forth um, it doesn't move back and forth when you're doing the shots. It only moves in the way that the object that you're trying to shoot is moving. So say the, the, the night sky is moving like this. So 
and it just moves like that ever so slightly. You're not going to see it move like this. This is exaggerated, but um, that's that's what this does. So let me just line those up again. And just put that like that roughly. Okay. Um, now, a couple of things I'm I'm not too picky or not too fond of this mount is um, when you go to balance it, the, it, it it's not totally 100% smooth when you're trying to balance it. So say, you know, say I'm going to balance this, okay, it, it, it kind of, it, it sticks a little bit when you're starting to move it. So, you know, like right there is actually pretty good balance on the declination end. Um, could be, it might be a little bit front heavy, but, uh, but for the most part, um, it's, uh, it's balanced. Just, I just wanted to show you that. Uh, another thing is these, these knobs for the, the, uh, the declination and the right ascension. The right ascension is on this side. You can't see it, but they're, they're quite small. Actually, what I'll do is I'll show you the, so this, this knob right here, um, it, it's kind of small. You can get, you can get other ones, your know, replacements for it, um, from, uh, ADM, I believe it is. Um, and they, they can come, they come in different colors. They can come in this, this kind of gold pattern or, or bronze, bronze ish pattern, or, you know, um, you can get them in, I think, uh, like a gunmetal silver and then black. But they're just bigger, so it's a little easier to to adjust them and uh, untighten and tighten. Uh, same thing with these knobs here. Uh, you can get different ones that um, that are a little bit easier to grasp. These ones aren't too bad. I've gotten a blister once <laughs> uh, because I, I really ratcheted this thing down. I made it sure it was nice and tight and all that. But um, what else? Uh, other than it being heavy, <laughs> um, it, it is. It's been a great mount. I got. I got the mount again, secondhand. Uh, all my equipment I've gotten is uh, secondhand, uh, and I have no problem with that. Um, the person that I bought this off of, uh, his father. It was his father's, and it was. It was fairly well cared for. Um, I may need to clean the corrector plate, which is the piece of glass up front, uh, maybe next year because it is getting a little bit. Um, it's got spots on it and stuff like that, so I don't want that uh, interfering with my image quality. But um, for the most part, uh, that is about it. Um, yeah, uh, it, it's been a great scope. Again, um, it's got a ton of focal length. Like, I mean, um, you've probably seen my images of Saturn and Jupiter. Uh, now that is with uh, with a uh, without the focal reducer on, and with a two times Barlow lens. Let's see if I have my Barlow lenses out, which I don't. Anyways, uh, bar what a Barlow lens is is it just magnifies it two times, so um, it just gets you zoomed in even more. So it adds even more focal length to already what this thing is. This is two thousand millimeters. So, um, so yeah, it's, it, it's quite, it can be quite powerful to get those really zoomed in nice tight shots, uh, of the planets. Um, that's probably, well, no, I shouldn't say that. I was going to say, um, that's probably what you'd only use it for is planets, but I've heard people use it for, um, deep space too. Um, in case like say for instance, the ring nebula, the ring nebula, um, that's my next project I intend to, uh, intend to shoot and um it's uh it's fairly small uh even with the even without the focal reducer uh it's fairly small so um so yeah i'll probably use i'll probably take my focal reducer off and i'll probably use two times barlow just to try and get in as close as possible now uh, i'm not sure what kind of image quality i'll get um because what also what the focal reducer does is it lightens the image like it, it it makes it it makes uh the light that's collected a lot more uh prevalent um so 
without that focal reducer and then adding a two times magnification, um, the images might be a little on the darker side. That's what I'm trying to say. So what I'll probably have to do is just keep my ISO bumped up to as high as it can go, which for this camera is uh, 1600. But uh, anyways, um, that's pretty much it about my equipment. Um, sorry it took so long to, uh, to get this video out. I know I've had a couple of people asking me, you know, uh, and then asking me what, what kind of equipment I have and all that. I know I show it a little bit um, during my videos when I'm setting up, but uh, I wanted to bring a video to you all and uh, just show you my equipment, give you a kind of a closer look at what I use. Um, how it all attaches to everything and uh, and you know the stuff that I the stuff that I do when I go out shooting for the night but um, yeah so anyways uh, I'm gonna cut it off here um, so I hope everybody you know enjoyed the video and um, you know I would really appreciate it if you liked comment and subscribe to the channel um, I try to bring I try to bring videos uh, as soon as I can make them. I like to get videos out as soon as I can make them. Um, but uh, what I might do uh, later, or maybe even uh, yeah, probably in a little while, is I'll um, I'll show you the programs that I use a little more in depth, like um, astrophotography tool and uh, and Stellarium. I showed that on a previous video, but um, yeah, uh, I hope everybody. Has a great day and uh, and uh, I forget what I was gonna say. <laughs> See, this is the thing about doing live stuff. Um, well, it's not live, but I mean, um, flying by the seat of your pants without a uh, without a script. But anyway, um, I hope everybody has a great day and uh, clear skies. Bye for now.